All right, class, so this is an Alex topic that's called using heat effusion or vaporization to find the heat needed um, to do a, a you know, process, essentially. So this question says, calculate the amount of heat needed to melt 152 grams of solid benzene and then bring it up to a temperature of 47.7 degrees Celsius. So right away, I, I know that I'm gonna need to, to look up some information. If I click on this data button right here, then I can find all of this phase change properties for pure substances data. So we're looking at benzene, so all of this information here, that's what I'm gonna sort of probably need um, as I do this problem. The other thing I wanna talk about is sort of drawing out a map of this problem. So what I might do is draw a graph of temperature versus time. Time would also be considered energy added. So as I move left to right, I'm adding energy to this um, you know, system. And we've seen where we have our different lines that look like this to go up in a sort of stepwise fashion. This right here would be our delta H of vaporization. So that's gonna be going from a liquid phase to a gaseous phase. This right here would be my delta H of fusion going from a solid phase to a liquid phase. And this would be heating up the liquid. This would be heating up the solid. Um, and all of these sort of different sections, I'm gonna have different ways to calculate the amount of energy associated with each one of those. So in this question, what we really need to do is we need to figure out where's my starting point and where's my ending point. And we're gonna use all of this information to, to determine that. So the first thing I would do is I would label where these phase changes happen. So according to my chart here, the melting point of benzene is 5.49 degrees Celsius. That means the temperature right here is 5.49 degrees Celsius. That's where that phase change between solid and liquid is gonna happen. That's the melting point, right? And then the boiling point I can read is 80.09 degrees Celsius. So this temperature here, where it goes from liquid phase to gaseous phase, that's gonna be at 80.09 degrees Celsius. So the next thing I wanna do is sort of say, well, where is my starting point? This says calculate the amount of heat needed to melt. So right away, I know that I'm gonna be in the solid phase, so somewhere along here. Um, 152 grams of solid benzene and bring it up to the temperature of 47.7. So I know my end point, right? My end point's gonna be somewhere right here. We'll say that this right here is 47.7 degrees Celsius. So this is my ending point. And then the starting point, this actually is not super clear of a question. It actually should tell us that we're starting at you know, solid benzene at the melting point of benzene, but I figured out that our starting point is gonna be right here, where we have uh, just completely solid. So as I, on this line, this is solid, that is at the melting point, um, but is not changed phase yet. So really this is gonna be a two-step process. Step one, I'm gonna, change the phase, I'm gonna go from solid benzene here to liquid benzene, all at the same temperature, it's just a phase change, I'm gonna use the delta H of fusion for that. And then in step two, I'm gonna heat that benzene from 5.49 degrees Celsius up to a final temperature of 47.79 degrees Celsius. So that's my two-step process. So for step one, the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use the delta H of fusion and I can look up on my data table, the delta H of fusion for benzene is 9.87 kilojoules per mole. So heat of fusion, that's my delta H of fusion. That's how much energy it takes, right? 9.87 kilojoules per mole. That's how much energy it takes to change the phase of benzene from solid benzene to liquid benzene. So this is gonna be 9.87 kilojoules, and we're gonna have to pay attention to those units there, kilojoules per mole. So if I wanna figure out the amount of energy it takes to go from the start point to this point here, that's gonna be, you know, I need to figure out the number of moles of benzene that I have. So I have 152 grams times one mole over 70, let me just double check, um, 78.12 grams, so molar mass of benzene, just calculating that, C6H6, equals um, 1.94 moles of benzene, so C6H6, 1.94 moles. So if I just multiply these two numbers together, that's gonna tell me the amount of energy that it takes, 1.94 moles, to change the phase of that 152 grams of benzene from solid into liquid, kilojoules per mole. We can see that my units of moles are gonna cancel out, and I get a value of 19.2 kilojoules. So that's the amount of energy it takes to go from this starting point over to here. 
And then we can do step two. So in step two, I'll just do step two right here. We're gonna use Q equals S times M times delta T. We're changing the temperature of the benzene from the melting point 5.49 degrees up to the end point of 47.7. Um, so I know that I need to use a delta T sort of type of equation. This S value that we're gonna be using here, that's gonna be the specific heat or heat capacity at 25 degrees Celsius given for benzene 1.63 joules per gram times degree Celsius or degree Kelvin. So this is going to equal 1.63 times my mass. So keep in mind, I need to use my mass here of 152 grams now times my delta T. So delta T is going to equal T final minus T initial. So that equals in this problem 42.21. So I'm taking 47.7 and I'm subtracting that from 5.49, right? And I looked this 5.49 up again on my data table. So this is gonna be the amount of energy it takes to go from this point here up to my end point. That's my delta T. This is how much I have, like the mass of benzene. And this is my specific heat capacity for benzene. So this is gonna equal 10,458 joules of energy. So now the question is, well, what's the total amount of energy? The total amount of energy needed to go from the start point to the end point, I'm gonna to need to add these together. Obviously I need to change these to both kilojoules or both joules. I'm gonna convert this one to kilojoules. So 10.458 kilojoules. And I'm just gonna combine these two numbers, right? If I just combine these two numbers, 19.2 and 10.48, that gives me a value of 29.6 kilojoules. That is the total amount of energy that's gonna be required to go again from the starting point all the way to the ending point. So all of these types of problems, the things that we're gonna sort of have in common is a graph that looks like this, right? So this is gonna be my solid. This is gonna be going from solid to liquid. This is gonna be completely liquid. This is gonna be completely gas. This is going from liquid to gas. It's always gonna look like that where these horizontal lines are, right? That's gonna be where the melting point or boiling point are. So on this axis, I've got temperature. And then where my ending points and starting points are. That's really the, the key to figuring out these problems is saying, well, where's my starting point? Where's my ending point? How do I go in between, right? Each step of the way will be a different calculation. Um, and, you know, we're gonna be using things that look like this, uh, you know, delta H effusion, delta H of vaporization up here. Q equals S times M times delta T. I need to know my heat capacities for the different substances and the different phases. Um, and then it's just gonna be adding all of that together at the end to get my total energy that I see there. All right, I hope that that helps. If you have more questions about this, definitely let me know.